And this question came in. I thought this was a really cool question. There was someone who was fairly new to um, the database world or the DBA world. And they said, they, they, they said, it was pretty simple. They said, I create a table called T. It looks like that. And it says table created. They were doing it in SQL Developer. And then I click on the SQL tab, which actually generates the DDL for that table. And they said, I was expecting to sort of get that back. And there are preferences in SQL Developer in which you can actually do that. But they got back the create table command followed by all of this kind of stuff that you have at the end of a create table command. And they said, can you explain all this stuff to me because I'm fairly new and, and what do I, you know, how do I, what do I choose for all these values? Now, for those that are thinking, please tell me he's not going to go through them. Yes, I am. But if it too long didn't read, you know, if, if you're on the TLDR, uh, you almost don't need any of them in my opinion. But I thought I'd explain each one because this is really more of a, a bit of a trip down memory lane as to um, where these things came from and how they came to be and why a lot of them nowadays are pretty much redundant. But I wanted to actually talk about each of these things in turn and I thought we'd draw some diagrams as well. So we're going to start off with percent free, if I can spell, and percent used. Now, most people are familiar with this, so we'll do this nice and quickly. It's pretty simple. A block starts off empty, and for lack of a better term, we fill it from the bottom, and eventually it gets to a point which we call percent free. By default, that's 10% of the block. And the reason we do that is what happens is people may come back later on and take an existing row and want to update it. And they want to make that row larger. So the row is now going to go to that size. Obviously it can't fit back where it was. And so that row will actually be relocated to here in the percent free area. And that space there becomes free for smaller rows to go back in. That's what's called percent free. The reason, even though this is a very simple concept and most people are familiar with it, I wanted to actually talk about it because the default, as I said, is 10%. And when I go help customers, what I find is just about every table I have is set to percent free 10%. But the reality is think about how many times do you actually have rows nowadays that actually update and get larger. It's actually not that common because in, the, in what I always used to call the good old days, we used to actually you know, be very cautious about the amount of space our databases used because space was a premium, it was expensive. Nowadays, things are a bit different. We get told, whatever you do, save everything. So tables nowadays become very much more exclusively insert. And if they're not exclusively insert, it's generally insert and delete. Updating rows where the rows actually become bigger still can happen, but it tends to happen fairly rarely. It's more those kind of things, what I call workflow or life cycle rows, where you have a bit of information to start with and then you add more information as the row sort of ages. But that's a fairly niche case. The most common example is just we insert data and we save it and we query it. I wanted to speak about percent free because think about that the vast majority of tables, I wouldn't be surprised if you might want to set to percent free one. You're still receiving a little bit of space in there for a little bit of growth and that can be useful in terms of managing transactions and the occasional update. But the reality is I'd think seriously about using percent free one or percent free two as your default and then adjusting to other values as time goes on. Now percent use came in when effectively a, a, a block became full it had crossed that margin. So I'll draw another block here. So we've got a block which actually has crossed the 10% threshold. So it's grown up to here. And then someone comes along and does some deletes. And so we start creating free space. And eventually that block should be available to be reused. It's emptied to such an extent that we want to actually reuse some of the space. And that's what percent used was. And we used to set that to 40. In fact, we still set it to 40. Once again, I would generally almost ignore that nowadays in terms of a, a setting that we probably would use. You can almost, I say almost ignore it because with the advent of a thing called automatic segment space management, we actually now have bitmaps which represent the state of blocks. And those blocks have a little bitmap on them. I think it's four bits if memory serves, which effectively indicates the block is zero, 25, 50%, 75%, or 100% full. Now, that bitmap maintenance is a very, very useful and efficient way of managing the free, whether a block can be reused for its space. 
And the reason that is useful is when we get onto a thing called free lists. And percent used used to be a critical statistic to make sure your free list management was under control. And so what I'll do is I'll talk about that next. I'll do, tackle these things out of order. So where I'm at the moment is percent free. Yes, you should be setting it. And in my view, probably setting it to one or two percent for most examples where you're just doing insert. Percent used, I'd be generally inclined to more or less forget about in most cases nowadays. So that's the first two we've covered. Let's go to a new page. So let's now talk about free lists because I mentioned that briefly on the last one and free list groups. This is why I said this is a bit of a trip down memory lane. Way back in the day, back in Oracle 7.3 and before and Oracle 8, you would have a table, you'd create a table and initially you'd be given an extent. So this is an extent, not a block. And an extent consists of a number of blocks. Now, obviously these blocks start off as all being empty and the database needs to know what blocks can be used as data starts coming in. So we used to manage this, it would actually have a thing called, I'll draw it as a list, a free list. And that was effectively information that stored what blocks were available. So there's B1, B2, 3, 4, and 5. The free list would say, yep, we got 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5 if I could care to draw. As, for example, block number 1 became full, this guy would be removed from the free list, such that as we need to allocate space for new blocks, the database come along and say, oh, I need to add some more data. Ah, block number two is on the free list. It's available for use to put rows into. And so we would start putting rows into block two. When it hit its percent free limit of 10%, it would be removed from the free list, etc. So the free list was just a way of managing what blocks were free at the initial and what blocks became free as you deleted data from them. As you can imagine, if you've got lots of people inserting lots of data all the time, well, now you have contention for these things because you've got lots of people trying to put things on or take things off the free list. So we introduced the concept of allowing for multiple free lists. So you could have multiple free lists on a table such that you would spread some of that contention around. Now that works pretty well until you had a thing called parallel server. You may know it better as rack, but back in the day we called it parallel server. And that is multiple nodes actually coming along and wanting to act attack, for lack of a better term, the free lists. Because one of the motivations for Parallel Server or Rack was you've got a very, very high throughput machine. You need to act, uh, throughput demands. You need to get a lot of insertions done, a lot of activity done. You've got thousands and thousands of transactions going on in rapid fire. Even with free lists, the problem now is you've now got a common resource that multiple nodes need to access. And even with Rack nowadays, we generally know that that introduces what we call a lot of cache fusion activity. Back in the earlier days, it would introduce a thing called pinging, which was a lot of disk to disk operation as multiple nodes competed for a common resource. So that's when the concept of free list groups came in. So you would actually have free list group one, free list group two, etc., And each individual instance on a rack or parallel server node could actually be given dedicated access to a particular free list group. In that way, we didn't have a lot of cross instance chatter for managing all this kind of stuff. But as we said, all this stuff is now managed, managed with automatic segment space management. One of the big initiatives when Oracle 9 IRAC came on. And in fact, cache fusion plus the fact that we introduced automatic segment space management is probably one of the reasons we renamed parallel server to being real application clusters because real applications for, you know, in most cases could be run on rack without doing a lot of uh, careful analysis of how they were going to run. There were still some other issues you need to be careful of when it comes to contention, but free list groups and free list management is pretty much now a solved problem. So you can pretty much forget having to set them as well, which is nice. This is the objective of making the database easier as life goes on. Oh, yeah.